Your ship can be destroyed before it even hits the ground. The enemy, friendly RDVs, both lethal. Choosing a good spot to call in is as critical as skill in piloting. So in this video, we will look at where and when to call in your ship, how to get yourself and your squad to it safely, and how to take off in a combat situation. Now before you start looking for the stop button, please understand this may seem like a step back from zipping around the map, like in videos 1 and 2, but it's not. This is critical and harder than you may think. Stick with me and I hope you learn a few things. Remember, your dropship is useless if it barely leaves the ground or if its crew never managed to man it. Firstly, get clear of the team. You do not want a friendly RDV dropping off a cheap lav to destroy your millionisk dropship. See my squad there calling in several vehicles. I am well clear, so my drop is safe. Secondly, choose a spot with cover for you and your ship. Tall buildings, barricades, bunkers, anything. Here I keep pinned against a wall until the ship is delivered. Thirdly, keep out of sight till it's been fully delivered. Don't stand near it waiting, even if it's only a metre off the ground, no matter how tempting it may be. Snipers watch deliveries just waiting for the pilot to appear. See here, I wait inside a bunker. And here I tuck myself against the wall. Fourthly, get in on the safe side. When you dash to the ship to get in, make sure you approach on the side facing away from any potential threat. In this drop, I see a high up red chevron in the distance. That's a potential enemy sniper. So when the ship arrives, I go round to the other side, putting my ship between me and the sniper. Now I could have dashed straight in, I was close enough, but I didn't risk it. Snipers hold still on a set point near the door and wait for you to wander into their crosshair. Always take the safe option. In this delivery I was lucky, I didn't get in on the safe side, and had that lab been a bit quicker, I would have been dead. I do it correctly here, waiting on the safe side saves me from this lab. And again here. Now if you don't pay attention and stand in the open, notice how I bravely saved myself by jumping up onto the pipe. However, the lab driver didn't fare that way himself. Hmm, I wonder what the chances are that he'll get out of this unscathed. Nil. They were nil. Bear with me, I'm just going to freeze that for a second just so I can savour that moment. Right, back to dropships. Lastly, take back up. It helps to have an extra pair of eyes looking for threats and an extra gun giving covering fire. If you have a squad, the best way to get them to your ship is for you to spawn and for them to wait. When you are ready and the dropship's been requested and is coming in, drop an uplink so they can spawn right in on where the ship is, safely. In fact, I always drop an uplink. If I die from sniper fire or getting run over by a lav, I can spawn straight back where my ship will be. Follow these steps and you should very rarely lose a ship. Now once it's delivered, you need to get airborne. So let's move on and have a look at takeoffs. So far we've been using a straight vertical takeoff to get airborne. You may have heard me say, first, get to a decent height a few times. Great advice for learning the controls. Now forget I ever said it. Let's watch it as a takeoff technique in a proper battle. That was an enemy rail tank hitting me for almost 2,500 damage from the other side of the map. This can happen right at the start of a match if your enemy gets his tank in quickly. This is why being fast and picking your drop off zone carefully matters so much. You need to not be there as soon as possible. This is why we use the straight up technique for training and then forget it unless certain conditions are met. So let's move on to advanced takeoff techniques. Takeoffs may seem like the sort of thing that should have been covered first, so why are we only just getting to them now? These use your yaw, pitch and slide skills, so you need to have become comfortable with those first. If you practice the manoeuvres in the first two videos, you should be comfortable with handling your ship, comfortable enough to move those manoeuvres closer to the ground. There are six main types of takeoff, with others being just combinations of these. In no particular order, they are 
the shielded climb, boosted launch, the forward launch, the backwards launch, the URF, which is up, rotate and forwards, and finally the up and slide. Let's look at an example of each of these. I'm going to be using examples from actual battles rather than practice takeoffs at the back of the map. This is because the choice of takeoff is dependent on the drop site and the battle conditions rather than personal preference. We'll start with the simplest but most situational, the shielded takeoff. This is a thrust takeoff like we've been using so far, but didn't I just tell you to forget this one? I did. The difference is in the positioning. To make this safe, you need to use the map features to your advantage. Here I use a tall building to protect my call-in and my climb. Notice that my vehicle drop was completely shielded from the enemy team. Also note that I climb by tucking very close to the side of the building to give me the maximum cover. And it's a good thing too, as it turns out when I peeked over the top that there was a tank on When should you use this? Any map where there are tall structures. If your ship is called in behind one of these, you can go straight up using it as cover, then have a peek over the top. The other time you can use this is when you have an afterburner module fitted. Just hit this on takeoff and shoot up quickly. Since we've yet to look at modules, we'll leave that one for now. Building on top of the straight climb is the most common form of takeoff, which adds a few elements to the straight climb that help balance the ascent rate against the conditions. This is the URF, which stands for up, rotate and forward. This is the main technique for two reasons. Firstly, you cannot control the direction a dropship is facing after the RDV has delivered it, so most often you need to point yourself the right way. Secondly, your objectives will be different after every drop. A URF is a simple manoeuvre. Thrust up, yaw to the point where you want to go, then pitch forward and apply thrust to begin flight. You may think I'm splitting hairs here. Isn't a URF just a straight climb, only at the top you go left? A climb is about gaining a lot of height, the URF is different, it's about direction. Compare this climb to this URF. Very different. See how my URF here differs from the first example. I rotate more and I keep to a very low altitude so that I maintain cover. And in this case, I make sure I'm clear of the pipe before I move. A URF is all about only going up as much as you need with a given environment. Unlike a straight climb, which is about going up as high as possible, as quick as possible. Remember that your enemy can see where your ship was dropped and may be waiting for you to emerge from where they last saw the IDV. For that reason it's best to keep low and make it harder for your enemy to predict your location. This is why we URF rather than just straight climb. Only get as high as you need and start directed flight as soon as possible. At the start of a match keeping low can also make sure you don't crash into any other RDVs that are dropping off vehicles used by your teammates. Another way to keep low and often the only way not to crash on takeoff is to do a forward or backwards launch. This takeoff limits initial thrust to almost zero while pitching forwards or backwards as quickly as possible. This gets you moving, but means you are very close to the ground. This approach to taking off is useful when your ship is resting on a structure or terrain feature that gives you a slight height advantage over the terrain in front or behind you. As in this example where I'm on a hill overlooking a lower road. I don't need to go up to gain height. If I go forwards, the terrain will drop from below me, leaving me a safe distance off the ground. Doing a forward takeoff is simple. Don't apply any thrust. Roll the less stick forward. Then, as you get some forward movement, and before you tip too much, apply thrust and fly as usual. The other main use for forward launches is when the dropship's on uneven terrain. Here, my ship is dropped on a steep slope, leaving it tilting backwards. Let's flash back to lesson one for a moment. Remember this? If I only thrust when on a slope, the ship will start to fly backwards and then tip. If I do not want to go backwards, or if there's a nearby structure I need to avoid, I can use a forward launch. Here I roll the left stick forwards with no thrust. Notice the ship gets level, 
but the nose is still on the ground and we haven't moved anywhere. Once level, I hit thrust and neutral the left stick. This way the ship starts to go straight up into a URF and I don't get any forwards drift. In the same fashion, I can use a backwards takeoff when on a forward slope. It's quicker to go backwards and spin the way I want to go than it is to go forwards and turn around. It also keeps me in cover and away from the main battlefield. See, I called my ship in behind this tall building. Backwards launch will allow me to maintain this cover. Let's look at how to do this. Pull back with the left stick until the ship is level. Once level, apply thrust. In this example, I keep the left stick back while thrusting, causing the ship to start flying backwards. I then release thrust, your right, to stop the climb and point myself in the right direction, all the time maintaining the cover that the tool building supplies. These non-thrust launches are very useful for keeping the ship out of the line of sight of those trying to target you. These launches have good situational use and can give you strong tactical options. Here's an example. I land on this rooftop and drop an uplink. However, the ground fight is going on just in front of where I landed. I need to retreat safely. Going forwards or up would leave me at low speed, right in the line of sight of the ground forces I'm trying to avoid. So I go backwards. This keeps me out of sight of the ground forces until I'm ready to engage. They are also particularly useful if your RDV pilot is a single stick. I don't know what I did to upset this guy, but he clearly hates me. My ship is dropped on a steep slope with its nose touching the building. No problem for a backwards launch. And there's our final takeoff type, the up and slide. So be aware of where you call in your dropship. Factor in the time it takes to arrive, where your enemy will be by the time it does arrive, the safest way to get to it. Once in, don't mindlessly hit thrust. Think about cover, your destination, and the safest way to get into the air. In the next video, We'll be back in the skies, we'll add altitude changes into our flight, and we'll learn a few more advancements.